Hello, everybody. This is Leo Brady with TheMovieGuy.com. My uh, guest today on the hot seat is writer and director, and I think I'm allowed to say uh, upcoming, like, big director, Kate Dolan. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being with me here today. Thank you for having me here with you. Yeah. Um, lovely to meet you. You too. Um, so I want to give our audience a little bit of background on you. You're from Dublin, Ireland, and mm -hmm. you graduated at the National Film School uh, mm -hmm. for directing and editing. Uh, but is being a director and being a storyteller, is that something that has always been uh, uh, something you've been aspiring to? Um, yeah, I think there was kind of never really a kind of other option or plan B to my mother's dismay. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think I got kind of injected with like a love of cinema very early because I used to watch a lot of movies with my mom growing up because it was just me and her and she used to kind of never be able to get me to go to sleep. So I would just be able to watch movies with her and she was like, okay, fine. So I watched a lot of movies that were probably a bit more adult than I should have been watching when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, it really instilled a kind of love of cinema. And then I, um, yeah, I, I, I in Ireland, we have these like sacraments you do in schools, like communion and confirmation. So you get yep. lots of money when you make them. Yeah. So my when I <laughs> my mom to her dismay again, I bought like a video camera, um, with my like joint com communion and confirmation money when I was about eleven. Yeah. Um, and then I started making little movies, and then it was kind of like there was no going back after that. It was like just heading straight to the the spiraling down to being a director right. in the headed to that direction yeah, yeah well i'm i'm a lapsed catholic myself so i know all about the money for confirmations and communions and using that money for things that you know <laughs> probably aren't exactly uh what the whole point of it was all about right yeah uh, exactly um so i also read that one of your mentors is director alice lowe you kind of like worked alongside with her in sort of a uh, mentorship program, if I'm correct. Um, mm -hmm. did, you, did you sort of learn a lot from her? And was she sort of somebody that you were like, okay, this is the type of path that I want to take? Or did, when you listen to her about what she's experienced with making film, were you like, okay, I'm going to do things differently? Um. Yeah, I think when when I was doing the mentoring scheme with Alice, she was uh, she had just had her baby. It was after Prevent, so her right. um her little girl I think was not even one yet, kind of thing maybe. Um, yeah. So she was uh, she was kind of full of a lot of kind of it was almost more like life advice than film advice, yeah. and uh, a lot of it I still greatly value today. Just more about like how to kind of manage people's accept uh, expectations of you and how to kind of deal with people rather than necessarily being about filmmaking she gave me she's a great writer she gave me a lot of notes on kind of projects i was working on at the time and um definitely still thinks that i kind of take on board uh when i'm writing now and um yeah no she's great she's brilliant um and very funny and very smart person <laughs> yeah yeah i mean um well, and I went back and watched your short film, Cat Calls, um, which oddly enough feels incredibly different from You Are Not My Mother. Um, with sort of the pandemic process and this being your first feature, did you feel that you kind of made a tonal shift a little bit on what your first feature was going to be versus some of the short films you've made? Um, yeah, I think, well, basically, the You Are Not My Mother can't be like, came into being because Screen Ireland, um, which is kind of like a, a government funded film agency in Ireland that help fund um, Irish film. Yeah. Um, so they, I had made my short film through a scheme that they had for funding short films. And then they were kind of brought out this scheme to uplift emerging female writer directors in Ireland um, to make their first feature. But the kind of stipulation was it's a 
400k budget and you can't really get money from anywhere else so it was always going to be something that had to be I suppose contained at that budget level that you could yeah. pull off for that amount so I think I had a rough treatment for your not my mother at the time of the application and it just felt like the kind of story that could fit within those constraints yeah and um, so yeah and I think like obviously when we were writing it we had to like take into consideration all that and then COVID happened which then <laughs> had to kind of take a few considerations as well so um yeah it's it's uh, kind of not as crazy as cat calls maybe <laughs> <laughs> right I mean I feel like cat calls has a little bit more of like a tongue-in-cheek humor to it whereas you are not my mother it seems like a very more serious approach and 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 really and again, it kind of leads into my next question too, like of where this script for you, where the inspiration came to write this movie, because it feels like it is a very personal film for you. Um, yeah, I think that it's kind of a combination of things. So it was like um, looking at kind of stories in Irish folk history, um, both the kind of, you know, stories you'd be told as a child about kind of, fairies and you know all these otherworldly um, myths and legends yeah. but then also the impact of those stories in actual Irish culture and how people at the time would believe those things and then commit these heinous crimes against their family members and there was a lot of kind of dark real true stories as well which kind of come off the back of that folklore yeah. so that was something that always really intrigued me that idea that like um you know, this was a reality for a lot of people as well. They truly believed it. Um, so taking on those kind of things, but then also it's, you know, the story is also a lot about kind of coming of age in a family where, you know, past trauma comes up again and how you deal with that as the young generation coming up and how that will affect you and shape you as well as kind of how the family deals with those things and, you know, mental illness and um, all that. So, um yeah, I guess it had to have kind of more of a serious tone to kind of tackle those themes and uh, show them some respect. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, and I love your lead actress. Uh, I want to make sure I'm saying her last name right. Hazel Duke? Yeah, yeah. Okay, definitely. Hazel Duke. Uh, I mean, she's saddled with obviously one of the toughest roles. She's in every scene. She needs to go through this emotional journey. How did you decide on her to be your lead character? And uh, what is, what is it, is it sort of about her that made her the perfect Shar? I mean, I think her performance is fantastic here. Yeah, she's kind of a um, spectacular <laughs> person. Um, I think she's got a very um, amazing career ahead of her. She's only 19, so she's, you know, she's still so young. And But she's so, you know, when we did, a, I had seen her in some films and her performances were amazing. Like, and she does really well, I think, that kind of um, performing those kind of internal emotions and internal struggle. And you could, you know, without ever saying a word, you can kind of understand her feelings and what's kind of going on inside. And um, right. so I'd seen her in films where she had kind of done that really well. And I knew that's what we needed for this character. And then when we spoke, it was just kind of a no brainer. Do you know what I mean? She just you know even though she was quite young she was so smart and really considered and had thought about so much and she really loved the script as well because she is really in interested in like paganism and that kind of um you know folklore and that side of Irish history so she was you know really buying into that aspect as well but I think she was just so smart and like um you know it was just a real joy to have someone like that and like so young as well to just kind of have so much on her shoulders in terms of performance but she never kind of she really took it in her stride and like also was the person on set every day that was just like smiling and when she came in and was always in a good mood and just like yeah. a sweetheart so it was just you know a real joy to work with her yeah yeah well I mean and and sort of uh while watching this narrative uh and watching sort of Hazel's performance go through it um one of the movies that I kept going back to what felt like an influence for you especially various scenes with Carolyn Bracken's uh character uh is John Cassavetes, that is uh a woman under the influence I don't know if that's sort of a movie that came to mind you know in writing but it, it does feel like it's this movie about um about understanding a mother and understanding sort of 
her struggle, but I, I, honestly, it feels like a very real fear in for family. I mean, there's a line that one of your characters says it's, that sometimes our families can be the scariest things, and it, it feels like that was sort of your inspiration. Is there a little bit of truth to that? Is there a little bit of um, sort of that your, your approach with Carolyn Bracken's character? Yeah, I think, well, it was very, you know, I think a lot of the scenes with her, you know, because there's also kind of a supernatural element to it. So you're balancing that. But I think a lot of the scenes with her, it was important to me that they felt like very honest portrayals sometimes of mental illness, that the ambiguity was there, that it's like, is that what's happening? Or, you know, or is it something else? Yeah. And a lot of those kind of, um, the performance that she gave, you know, Carolyn was very well researched and she did a kind of a lot of um she was but yeah she really kind of connected with it personally as well I think you know a lot of some of it's drawn from my personal experiences growing up um but also you know my friends some of my friends growing up as well who had parents with mental illness and like just kind of experiences of that kind of bipolar disorder and that kind of thing where people are very unpredictable and I think as a young person when you're not very equipped to deal with that it's like extremely frightening and I think especially if it's somebody very close to you it can be you know the like a nightmare it's like truly yeah. like very frightening so I think you know yeah. it was very important that that felt authentic while also being kind of this horror genre beat as well in a way right yeah well I mean and going back to to like the horror genre and and on the technical side I mean what I what I thought was just amazing about this film was the sound design and uh I noticed that like there's kind of a uh trickle effect of a score you don't really have much of a score going on in the first half of the film uh you use a lot of the sounds of you know wh whether it's doors creaking or you kind of hear like cracking in, in her mother's neck and things happening. It, what, talk about the process of that and was your sort of approach like, I want to scare them with what they're hearing almost more than what they're seeing. Yeah, well, I think like with horror, like the most important thing almost is sound design. I think like, cause yeah. you can do so much um, with sound that, you know you can kind of explore very weird experimental things with sound design you yeah. know that necessarily you can't maybe do on screen if you haven't got the budget or that kind of thing or um so i think yeah it was we really kind of brought that together i think me and the editor did a lot of work when we were editing the film with kind of temporary sound design and then brendan rahel he um came in to do the post-production sound on it and he yeah. really just like brought a whole new level to it which was amazing um, but it was something, yeah, I was always like, considering throughout, like, even when we were shooting, it was kind of in my mind, like, what are we hearing when we see this scene play out? And, like, how that was already kind of building, I think, throughout the kind of process. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and it, I, it also kind of balances also with, of course, cinematography. I mean, I think, like, you don't do, you don't do jump scares in this movie. You do sort of a very... Uh, sort of like clinging like it feels like you're kind of getting engulfed in this terror in this movie and I, I love that about it um talk about working with your dp uh the name narayan van male correct uh and narian is how you narian it. narian yeah. is how it's pronounced okay narian van male i mean you use a lot of like mirrors you use sort of like long shots down hallways what was uh your process working together to get the look of you are not my mother. Yeah, so we, one of the kind of first things was Narian had these kind of uh, slightly more vintage lenses. They're Cook S2, so they kind of have a more hazy look to them, which I really wanted for it to feel a little bit, you know, rougher around the edges, that it was a little bit soft. It wasn't exactly um, crystal clear, just right. to make it feel a bit more authentic and a bit, um, you know, to make it feel like a real family home and like you're feeling like you're, really seeing these people in a slice of their lives essentially and yeah. um, so that was like a we had this kind of idea as well in kind of color of like elemental colors because we have the fire in the film so there was kind of yeah. a contrast of this warmer palette and then this more um kind of dark and earthy and wet i keep feeling i suppose and yeah. um, so then and then i think just like the shooting style i think we 
like you know you kind of go in with best intentions but we shot in an actual house um that was a real location so it wasn't like a set or anything so you know sometimes the style of the film is like beholden to where you are and like you know a camera can only get like two angles in this room so we're gonna just have to do it that way um but yeah I think there's definitely like we always tried to and Arian's brilliant and he's you know does amazing things um with very little so um yeah we tried to kind of build that tension through the kind of a lot of wider shots and just kind of letting shots play out as opposed to kind of trying to get a bunch of coverage all the time um, yeah yeah well i mean and honestly there's a scene in the end of this movie i don't want to give away too much but there's a scene where you're using sort of light and shadow uh on carolyn bracken's face that is just like absolutely terrifying like she steps into the light at one moment and it's like oh my god what am i you know what am i looking at i found myself clenching my fists at times i mean so, <laughs> so, so if your goal in in the visuals was just like to terrify the audience you are achieving that and it, and i think that's like one of the greatest parts about this movie um i wanted to sort of ask you kind of a I guess it's sort of a softball question, but this is your first feature and you're premiering at Toronto International Film Festival. Talk a little bit about like what sort of this anticipation has been, because I feel like you had great success with short films already. And this is something that, you know, uh, one, I think it's going to be a big hit. I think audiences are going to absolutely love it and be horrified by it. But, uh, (laughs) But talk about sort of this opportunity and having finally having your first feature, which is more than excellent, more than, you know, it's getting my thumbs up. With approval, so. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so nice. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's kind of surreal um, in a way like it, you know, the film was, it was really tough to make it, you know, we had a very tight budget and we had, you know, we shot during a second wave lockdown in Ireland. So <laughs> you know, there was so much kind of thrown at us. And I think it was just like amazing heads of department working on it and the cast were like, everyone just really bought into it and like personally very much connected with it, I think, and gave it their all. So I'm just so grateful for them just to kind of how it's turned out because I think it, um, you know, doesn't wear its budget on its sleeve. And I think it, it kind of hopefully will resonate with audiences. So yeah, I mean, like it's kind of, I still don't really believe that we're, premiering at tiff midnight madness because i was such a fan of i've always been a fan of like midnight madness so i was always like kind of following the films that would premiere there and always be really interested in them and so you know as a kind of film student so it's kind of crazy it's like a dream (laughs) it's like so cool (laughs) yeah that's awesome all right well kate dolan thank you so much for being with me here today i like i said i love the film just fantastic stuff it's it's great to have uh you know honest and very like real i i related to this film a lot you know i i I know i read that you grew up with a single mother i also grew up with a single mother and i think like this movie just it may be tough to watch for some people but i think it's it's very resonant very well done thank you thank you so much um thank you i really appreciate that yeah so all right congrats thanks for being and uh, we'll talk to you next time Awesome. Thank you so much.